Jamie Dornan, welcome to the project and congratulations on The Tourist. Thank you for having me. Now, Jamie, if you thought lockdown was isolating, what did you make of the sparse Australian outback? It was um, remote, definitely. Um, but, you know, it's got a lovely vibe to it out there. The people, you know, there's just a simplicity to it and a, a calmness to it. Not much going on, but, you know, a couple of pubs, a pool table, enough to keep us going. Please tell me that if, if Jamie Dornan was travelling across the outback, you wouldn't be travelling in a Hyundai or whatever that car was. We all drive Toyotas in Australia, don't we? Yeah, but you need something with a bit more muscle to get across the outback, mate. I think it was at like your know, Land Cruiser or something. I think, you know, we, we were doing all right. You know, I had the, the, the bar at the front so that uh, for the inevitability of the kangaroo uh, sort of impact <laughs> that would happen in case. We actually didn't hit any, but um, the side of the road was littered with, with um, dead kangaroos, which was quite a sad sight. But um, they don't seem to learn their lesson out there. They just come at you in the dead of night. It's it's. It's strange that they haven't evolved to the point of going, lads, maybe we shouldn't be jumping out at these cars because our mates are dead. It's very strange. They're, they're idiots, um, uh, Jamie, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> the tourist joins films like Wake in Fright and Wolf Creek, which use the Aussie Outback as a backdrop for scaring the hell out of us. Either I have the worst luck in the world or someone's trying to kill me. Years ago, my wife, uh, when she was still an actress, so like before I met her, um, she did a, uh, a couple of movies out in, in Australia and she um, she told me this, I'm not even going to repeat it, but this crazy story about uh, the Outback that she'd been told by uh, what, a director of photography, cinematographer that she worked with out there that I think about all the time because it was so dark. Hello? <laughs> you have to help me. Weird stuff happens once you get a safe distance out of uh, city. <laughs> I think in any in, in any country, I think you know there is an oddness to the isolation. And, and knowing all of this, you still decided to bring your family down here. Uh, your, your wife and three kids. Were the three kids happy you brought them down to the outback? Yeah, you know what? I sort of kept them away from the outback for the most part, so I would have it that I would. Um, you know, we, we were based in Adelaide, so the kids, the older two kids went to school in Adelaide and everything. And uh, so when I was in the outback, I would just go shoot during the week and drive the four hours back to spend the weekend with them and then drive back again. It seems like everything's coming up, Jamie, with his other film, Belfast, already scoring him a Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actor. We're living in a civil war. What do you want? I want my family with me. I want you. I imagine it's a very personal film for you. It's your hometown. You had the premiere recently. What was that like, making a movie based in Belfast, called Belfast, and premiering it in Belfast? Yeah, it was mad, mate. It really was. You know, um, these things don't come along that often. You know, I, I play characters from Belfast a lot. I, 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 they let me remain Irish in The Tourist. I mean, it was written as, you know, the, the clues in the title, like, this guy's not from Australia. Um, so, uh, I, so, which is great. I'm, I'm happy that I, I've managed to do that in my career, you know, stay close to home, but never so much so that the, the name is in the title and, you know, I'm literally making a movie called Belfast. It's a, it's a one-off. It was just this ridiculously, like, beautiful package of, of a job. And I'm very thankful that um, people seem to touch wood so far. The reception of the movie's been insane. It's been amazing, and I'm um, just trying to enjoy enjoy the ride, yeah. I read recently you said that you've never felt more ambitious than you do at the moment, and that's reflected in the, in the two projects we're talking about now. Why do you think that is? It's partly uh, maybe an age thing, you know. Uh, it's partly just the, where I happen to naturally be in my career. Um, but I think it's something to do with probably, um, I turn 40 next year, and I, I've never allowed myself to admit it, maybe. I've probably harbored ambition more than I let on before. But now I just feel like, yeah, I just want to sort of prove something. I think some personal things have happened in my life in the last year or so that I just, uh, I don't know, I feel like I have a bit of a point to prove now. Forward. The kids are seeing me as just ours if I can be killed. We can give these boys a better chance than we ever had. Jamie, congratulations on the tourist. Uh, congratulations on, on, on Belfast. And thanks for joining us tonight on the project. Cheers, man. Thank you very much.